In, inside of Pacific Seafood, Pacific Seafood, the fully integrated company, we have a shellfish division that is itself is fully integrated. We go from start to finish, a hatchery, farms, all the way through to production. We operate in four different states. We have production facilities in Hawaii, Oregon, Washington, and California. The importance of, of having all these various locations up and down the West Coast is the diversity of product, the ability to, to access product at different stages, different periods, different times. We are the largest fresh shucked oyster producer. We grow three products. We grow manila clams, we grow Pacific oysters, both triploid and diploids, and we grow Kumamoto oysters. Um, and we grow two types of Kumos now. We, we grow a long line Kumamoto, and we grow a single seed SEPA basket. Whatever type of shellfish we grow, oysters or clams, their life cycle begins in the hatchery. So oysters are, uh, they're mollusks and, they're, and they go through a metamorphic cycle to, to reproduce itself. Uh, when an oyster gets to a certain size or to a certain age, it'll get to a place where it spawns when the conditions are right. The water has to be warm enough and they'll spawn. We use our own carefully spawned and selected brood stock to produce larvae. When the larvae get to a certain size, 300 microns, it needs to attach to a hard object. We uh, raise our own larvae up in, in, in a hatchery in Coulissine, and, and that larvae is raised till it gets to the place that it's ready to set. We feed them algae. All of the animals we raise, mussels, clams, and specifically oysters mainly, is all fed algae that we create ourselves at the hatchery. The larvae attach themselves to culch, the shells, and develop into spat. When it gets ready to set, we take and uh, put them in tanks with warm water and shell bags in there, and the larvae will set on those shells. Oysters destined as singles are grown a bit differently than those headed for shucking. When we want to set singles specifically, we grind that colch. We sieve it across screens into specific sizes, which are very small. And then that is added into a downweller, which is rings of water, and the water is flowing into the top of the ring down through the bottom of the screen. We add the free swimming larvae to that. They'll swim around and stick to one tiny piece of shell. Each day, we drain the water out of them, we rinse them, we move them around, keeps them from growing their shells into each other. Now established on culch, the animals are ready to be turned over to nature so they can grow and mature. Once those uh, larvae get set on the shells, we take those bags out, we put them on pallets, and then we put them in the bay to uh, climatize them. Uh, for six to eight months, depending upon the time of the year. One of two methods are used to grow the animals from this point on, on bottom or off bottom. Those destined for on bottom growth are distributed by oyster farmers for a lengthy stay in nature's nursery. The majority of the oysters farmed in Willapon, the, the, the bays in the north, in Washington and Oregon are grown on bottom. And the, the cults bags in, of which the the baby seed, the spat, the young oysters are set upon those culch bags. And after uh, they get to that place, then we'll take those bags and we'll open them up and, and we'll spread them along the bottom of the bay. And uh, they'll, they'll be there for two to two and a half years. There's some areas that grow, grow a good seed oyster, but not necessarily a good fattening oyster. So we always want to provide the best possible product for the market. So we'll move some oysters to a particular area that grows a you know, more fat, uh, richer, better tasting oyster. Two methods are used for growing off-bottom oysters, SEPA baskets and long lines. Shell gets strung through the lines, like they're set into the tanks, and brought to us where we'll store them for a month or two to get some size to the, to the seed. They're then strung out on the PVC poles and basically left alone for 16 to 18 months to grow. You get a higher yield per oyster shell. Labor's more intense. Um, not all oyster grounds created equal. Some does not lend itself to ground culture. On the long lines, they tend to stay put. Down in Northern California, we also do what we call SEPA baskets, which is a, a floating basket method where the, the oysters roll up and down with the tide and keep them well-shaped and they grow very rapidly that way also. 
The tube shape of the basket is designed to create a tumbling effect, which develops a well-cupped, pristine, single Kumamoto oyster with a clean shell and high meat content. And Siba baskets are, are a form of off-bottom culture. It's, it takes a different type of seed. The seed that, that we use in SEPA baskets are single seeds, so they're a very small oyster, individual oysters from day one. That's just a beautiful little tiny kuma. Pretty, he's beautiful. We've got state-of-the-art jet drive vessels with state-of-the-art harvesting equipment that is second to none. We're, we're in the process of developing a long line harvester so that we can utilize high tides to harvest these long lines rather than needing to go out at low tide and, and manually harvest them. We've got 14 new vessels over the last 10 years, state-of-the-art shallow draft vessels. For some on-bottom harvesting, we use an improved dredging method. The newer dredges, they're bigger, they're faster, they're more efficient as far as fuel consumption. It allows you to get on your beds at different times. Some harvesting is still done the old-fashioned way, with lots of back-breaking elbow grease. It must be a labor of love, filling those 17-bushel tubs at whatever hours are dictated by tides, weather, or changes in a customer's order. How else to explain a harvester's dedication? At Pacific Seafood, that dedication is a two-way street. They need to be out there working at anywhere from 10 a.m. to midnight to 2 in the morning. So, you know, you have to, you have to care about your people and keep them happy because it's something that gets in your blood and keeps you back out there because you enjoy it. We're very careful with our product, the way it's handled as far as time and temperature, from time of harvest to point of sale. The oysters come in, uh, we ice them. You know, we have the ability to ice our oysters uh, before shucking. For non-single oysters, hand shucking is the first stop in the process of getting the oysters prepared for shipping. And those oysters go from the shucking operation into the, into the packing operation where they're washed and they're packed in the right container based on what quality they are and what size they are and then they're shipped out to markets all over the country. I just want people to understand what it takes to get an oyster jar in a retail case. All the effort that it takes, all the years that it takes, all the hard labor that it takes to get that there. So everything we do is around keeping our product the highest possible quality that we can, from the time it comes out of the water to the time it hits a customer's plate. You know, the bread and butter of shellfish at this time probably is the shut market. You know, we're, we're definitely expanding into other products, you know, and different varieties of oysters. Our main focus in production here is uh, shuck meats, you know, fresh shuck meats. Um, we do live in shell and uh, also manila clams. Pacific Seafood is indeed increasing its capacity for manila clams in order to meet increasing customer demand. Clams are farmed and harvested with methods similar to those used for oysters. At the early stage of their development in the hatchery at Kona, Hawaii, and during the maturation process in the nursery, clams require some special processes of their own. We go out and we spread a crust shell down and that creates that calcium environment of the shell, the clams like that, and then we put a gravel over the top of those. So you're creating that on a, on a bare sand, you create a better environment for the clam bed. Pacific or Kumamoto oysters or clams, Pacific Seafood supplies one of the world's best protein sources and does it all sustainably taking care to nurture the fragile habitat where the animals grow and where our team members and their families live. We have vertically integrated, so we pretty much uh, control the product from the time it's uh, set in, a, in, a, in the hatchery and all the way through through our distribution centers where they distribute the product right to our customers so we can get it to the retailer or the food service location at the highest quality. And with our traceability system, we can tell exactly where and when our seafood was raised, harvested, and processed. 
Just one way of ensuring consistent, high-quality shellfish protein. It's dedication to quality and excellence. It's, that's what we strive for constantly. You always do your best. They need to care about what we're doing because of the heart and soul that's put into the product. You know, I mean, there's no better way to say it. You know. <laughs> Our environmental stewardship that we, that we do is not just important for our farm, it's important for the health of the bay. We like to think that we create way more habitat and everybody will give us credit for. When we came here, there was no eelgrass. We, as you can see from a walk through our beds, we've got eelgrass everywhere now. We just want to be the best. It's not about size, it's more about being the best, doing the best you can, the best effort, uh, produce the best protein on the planet. It's a fresher, cleaner oyster that we can get to market and as a consumer that's what you want. At Pacific Seafood we expect ourselves to do business right, to lead by example and to help out when we're needed. Those values help us navigate our business in three distinctive areas of responsibility. Sustainability, community and self-governance. It is our company philosophy that guides our everyday decisions. It's good to be responsible, not just because it's the right thing to do, but because it also sets the bar for our company's commitment to ensure that the communities in which we work and live will continue to prosper.